Let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something. This is, this is possibly, uh, the, not, not possibly, this is unquestionably the most royal interview I've ever had in my life. Show me some love, man. <laughs> Everybody from CNN, BBC, uh, the Russia for Girls, and TAS, they're all looking for this couple, but they chose to come on the KSM show. Not because I'm just, uh, not because I'm the greatest host in Ghana, but no. It's because the man is also my, my son, you know. Show some love, man. <laughs> Show some love. So today, today we, are, we are very honored, very, very happy, extremely happy indeed to be uh, the first to interview the, the royal couple in Ghana. You know who the royal couple is. If you don't know, then you do not live in Ghana. I'm going to start with, the, with who used to be Ms. Giftienti. Who used to be you? No more. She is now Nanayiri Awo Dansua. Put your hands together, man. Show some lovers. Awo Yiri Dansua. Hey, there we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, wow. Show some love, my mother. Nana, I want Nana, Awo Yiri, sorry. Hey, Awo oh, Yiri. <laughs> The names are many now. The names are many now. I know, right? How do you feel? <sighs> <laughs> still hasn't sunk in yet. Yeah. It still hasn't sunk in yet. I'm still trying to find the balance, but it's it's been an experience. It's been very exciting. I mean, um, I'm happy. You're happy. I am happy. Put your hands together, man. <laughs> <laughs> but but this, and I'm so old. I've never seen anything like this in Ghana before, you know. Yeah, yeah. It was like the whole Ghana was watching this. Yeah. It was like a reality show. Yes. Did you feel like that? It did. It <laughs> did. It felt as if my life was out there and yeah. everybody was following every first step yeah. that we took. Yeah. And it's been very humbling because I've had a lot of email comments on social media, people telling me that, you know, my faith has been strengthened. Now I know that God makes things beautiful in his own time. There's no need to rush. There's no need to compete. God has a plan for everybody, each and every one of us. And it's been an inspiration to others. And I, I feel very humbled and blessed that mm. God has used my experience, my honor, my celebration to also encourage other people to mm. have faith in mm. God. Mm. Mm. <laughs> did, did you ask any point think that I'm cool I mean I'm going to be single I'm comfortable with oh yes what I yes, am. yes yes yeah? yes 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 I've I had oh in fact I had been threatened several times that they will leave me because I wasn't making up my mind he proposed to me two and a half years before we finally got married really yeah you didn't want to get married I met him no I just felt I was okay I just felt there was so much I had to do and it wasn't like I had I was set in my mind I wasn't going to marry. For me, marriage wasn't the, my top priority. I was going to get on with my life, fulfill my purpose, make an impact. If marriage meets me on the way, if it's the will of God that I marry, it will come. And I've said on many platforms that I will not chase marriage. Marriage will have to chase me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... It wasn't like I was against it, but it wasn't a bother, yeah. and it wasn't an issue. Yeah. And it wasn't because I was afraid of it. I just felt that there was so much I could do. Um, I had a purpose. And maybe positively or negatively, I grew up in a single home just with my dad. And so there wasn't that pressure on me to get married, especially for my father. And everybody who knows me knows that my father was everything and my father's word was you know the law and he taught me to be hard working to make an impact to live a le to le um, leave a legacy and that was all there was nothing mm. about you must get married because mm. you are a woman mm. Mm. no mm. 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 i admired people who were married and they seemed to be enjoying their marriage they were happy in them i admired them but I was never envious and I was never that woman who like, oh God, when will I, mm, uh, mm, you also get married? Mm, no. My mm. prayer was always, Lord, if he's not the one, please take him out of my life. That was always the prayer. Mm, yes. Mm, mm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, 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 
you're, for the longest time, you have become like an icon for independence, yeah. representing the strength of womanhood. Yeah. Uh, do you think that it has now been jolted? That, oh, after all, you know, even the strong, independent woman, mm -hmm. now is now, he's now a whole woman but now. <laughs> this is the end of the... How, how do you react to that? No, not at all. I mean, it just encourages people that you can do it whether married or single. I'd had programs, you know, or, or, that's on the standpoint with women who have achieved so much and are married, like Adela Dramnabwaji, Nano Yeletha, now Charlotte will say, um, we have um, Benny Sam of Waldorf, we have um, uh, Dr. Rose Kooting mm. of Abantu. These are stronger mm, women mm, mm, mm. who are achievers, empowering women. They've been in the trenches for years, even before I even thought about becoming mm, mm, a gender mm. advocate or activist. But they are married. So you can do it whether married or single, mm. you know. Mm. So I think it encourages people to know that it doesn't matter your status in society. Mm -hmm. You can get married, you can get simple, you can get single, but the most important thing is make an impact. Mm. Mm. And that you have done. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go back a little bit into uh, <laughs> your childhood growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, where did you grow up, Musa? Tema. Tema? Yeah. Really? You're a Tema girl? Oh, through and through Tema girl. Really? Yes. Oh, Is that wow. the king who's moved me from Tema? Oh, the king has moved anyway, you. Anyway, I'm still around Tema. You know? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you're never at Trasaco Valley? No, never, never. Oh, okay. <laughs> never. Actually, I've been there just about three or four times. I can count the number of times wow. I've been to wow. Trasaco Valley. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and then and then your schooling in France, mine. I went France? to uh, Tema Community Eight Number One Primary okay. Saito, and then I went to Infantman Girls Secondary School, went to GIJ, and then went on to do my masters at uh, City University in the UK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What what? <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> And, 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 and I saw you had a, the, the, there was a, a good representation from a yeah. Moga. Is it Moga? Moga? Yes, Moga. Yeah, Fancy Wine Girls. Yeah. Yeah. Moga 89 Group. What are your fun days at Moga? Oh, God. <laughs> um, we had some really crazy times, you know. I was in Engman House. I became the entertainment prefect. Oh, okay. And during my time, we had some really good entertainment. It was a bit too much. So they drew a timetable for us. There were days when weekends that we have to do the quizzes and then the debates. Mm. And there were more than the records night. So I developed a plan that during the quiz, some of the questions will be, who played the song? Then we we'll play the song. The song will play for like five minutes <laughs> and we'll dance before we come back to the question, <laughs> before we come to the answer. So it can be a quiz that it can yeah. be a debate night, but, but there will be some entertainment yeah. and dancing in there yeah. they had to yeah. yeah and i was you know the champion of the you know the day event i was really? very good yeah the jama group you were, you were jama? Lead, yeah whoa how yeah. you know many of those jama songs oh plenty plenty, plenty. can you can you swing sing one? Oh. Oh, you're not allowed to <laughs> plenty jama songs yeah. but not here, <laughs> not here. <laughs> you what? know where infantima was known as a man's side we were not your regular girls' school, you know. We were the first to stage a coup in school. Cool. In the 80s, yes. What did you do? We used to have mock parliament. And the, 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 the party that wins rules the dining hall for one week. Oh, wow. And my side, we staged a, We lost, but we staged a coup and overthrew those who won. Oh, really? And we ruled <laughs> the dining hall for one week. So we locked them up in the dining hall for one whole day. And wow. then we took over. Until they signed to agree that they will allow us to, <laughs> to, do, <laughs> to take over. <laughs> Were you a nuisance? I was, I was naughty. You are naughty? Yeah, naughty, not in a bad way. But Gifty Auntie was part of everything. I was part of every group. You know, we was dancing for school, modeling for school, part of the debate. I won't do too well, but you need me in there. Wow. You see, it, it, when it's sports, I'm not good, but you need me in there. Because <laughs> I ginger up some spirit and get people to do crazy things that will cheer up the real athletes to mm -hmm, do well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I was part of a part so of every group. AFS, wildlife, 
what have you? I was part of everything. So you're very, very vibrant. Very, very vibrant in school. Very, from a, very from vibrant. From as far back as how old? I think when I, even from primary school. Wow. Because Tema, I was part of the culture group. Um, Tema comes to eight, number one primary. Even in primary school, as it was Saito. Now, they used to have volleyball. Now, volleyball, I'm not good at it. But I have to be in there. <laughs> because... Every, I was shouting and screaming. <laughs> I mean, I won't touch any ball. But I was just <laughs> running and confusing everybody yeah. to get my side to win. So you need me in there. I was part of the cultural group at school. We'll go to places to go and dance. You know, everywhere I was in there. You know, wow. so I remember one of my teachers said, I will give to auntie. It's a chin. It's a chin. We'll be here. You know how? Oh, 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 <laughs> 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 I was part of very, I've been very, very active since childhood. Wow, wow. You know, did, did you so see now. this, you know, being such an active child and now being a very, very prominent figure? No, did I didn't. Did you see it coming? No, I didn't. I didn't because growing up, all that mattered to me was to make my father happy, to make my father proud, and to be able to make an impact. Those are the thing, uh, three things that my dad taught me. That's what he wanted me to be. That was what he said mattered most. So that was mm. all that I aimed to be. I didn't aim to become this figure, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, this mm -hmm. prominent person, this person everybody's what, what, mentioning what, him. No, I, 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 wow. I didn't. What, what was your, what, what did you think you'd become? What were you shooting for? Just to be somebody who would make an impact in a mm. small uh, you know, Connor, yeah. who make her father proud yeah. Yeah. and be able to take care of my, her father. Mm. That was all that mattered mm. to me. Standpoint, because yeah. you, you were with GTV for about yeah. 19 years, I think? For um, almost 18 years. Almost 18 years. 18 years, including 18 and a half years, including national service, about wow. 18 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You did national service there? Yes, I did my okay. national service. And GTV. the transition to Standpoint? Yeah. How long, how long had that you plan know, been? You started, started, started Standpoint whilst I was still with GBC. And um, I wanted a collaboration, but uh, the then uh, Mr. William Ampem who was the director general then, thought that, listen, GBC, we need money. If you think you can get money to have a show and pay mm. for it, just go and look for the money and do it. We can't do collaboration with you. Wow. At that time, I thought he hated me, but I think it was the best thing <laughs> he did for me, honestly. I you see, know. I oh, see. yes, at that time, I thought that. And I'm related to him, too. So I was just like, I mean, how can Uncle Willie do this to me? We call him Willie P. <laughs> I couldn't say it, either, but I went to look for money, and wow. we started along the line. When it started making an impact, I started getting problems here and there. But thank God it was a private um, mm. production, mm. and it got mm. to a point I realized, no, I have to move on. So it started first as a GTV production. No, no, no. It's always been a private production. Oh, it's always been a private we production. We paid for it from right day from one. Spread. Okay. From okay. day one, we okay. started in two thousand and eight. 11th of July 2008. It was a, a Thursday. We paid for it from day one. Wow. But, yeah. Show some love, man. Show. <laughs> what, 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 what inspired that whole program? Well, I thought that as a society, we didn't understand women. Mm. And we thought that women who were assertive, yeah. who were outspoken, yeah. who have some brains and intelligence and feel that no, I, need, I have something to share. You know, we're a bit too much. We're yeah. unacce unacceptable in our society. Yeah. They were being called names. It came out of hosting the breakfast show for a long time mm. with Nanaya Oforiata, mm -hmm, Professor mm -hmm. Audrey Gadjepo, mm -hmm. then Dr. Um, Amwako, um, Margaret Amwako. I think Amwako something, I forgot it. She's at Lagon. And they were always being called names. They were being insulted. Mm. I was mm. also being mm. called names. And so I thought, that, listen, let's have a program where we'll have lots more women coming on. Because when you have a lot, of, in our society, when you have a lot more people being outspoken or doing certain things, then we feel that, oh, okay, it's a norm it's to be accepted. So let's start charting a course where people will know that it's not just these few women who are breaking you know, the laws or the rules or the taboos to be outspoken. But there are lots more women out mm, there mm. who are very intelligent, mm. who are very outspoken, who have something to share. So it started by us doing a program that would be seriously political. Mm. 
of financial, you know, big, serious issues, as, you know, they used to call it. Serious issues, not issues for women, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, so the first two programs were women in politics. But when we started, I realized that the problem goes much deeper than what I was thinking. I was privileged to have a father, to have had a, a father who believed in me and pushed me and kept telling me that, forget about what anybody mm. says. Just go out there, be yourself, break the boundaries, you know, attain the highest that you can. But there were lots more people who were afraid because of what their family will say. Mm -hmm. I'll be insulted. I'll come to my father, tell my father, they said, they said, and so what? Have you died? I mean, did he kill you? <laughs> did he change your name? You are still gifty auntie. Just go ahead. Just do it. Don't mind them. Mm -hmm. And I remember when Nano Yeleta, now Minister for Gender, Honorable Nano, came on and talked about dealing with broken hearts. Oh, God. That day, I'm sure my email <laughs> was just choked. People couldn't believe that Nano Yeleta could have a broken heart, you know. And she talked about it so openly that Auntie Joyce came on to share her experience of, you know, being married, being single and all that. And people, these wow. are people that wow. people held wow. in high esteem. Wow. So wow. if these women are able to open up, then who am I? That's what opened the floodgates for us. And now we talk about everything. Yeah. It's a mixed basket yeah. of everything. Put <laughs> to us together, man. Now we know the feminine side. <laughs> No, look, we know the family. We appreciate it. We understand it better. Exactly. Wow. Yes. yes wow. Yes, wow. Yes. Well, my next question is, and I, I'm not going to ask you because I want to find out mm -hmm. how this man broke this strong, independent <laughs> woman who said no so many times for two years. I want to know how he carved his way into the okay. system. <laughs> so, folks, hang on. We're going to go for a commercial break. When we come back, mm -hmm. it's time to invite the king himself. We are Kishri, Nana and Sakwa. The we'll fourth. Be, the fourth. Thank you. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> The KSM Show.